surface areas of prisms and cylinders. So what a surface area is, it's the area that's on the surface of an object. And in the case of uh, prisms and cylinders, we can tend to we tend to unfold them or unroll them, and then we end up with shapes that we can then figure out the area of. And sometimes the way you'd use this are things for like how much paint you need, or like I'll show you later how much frosting you need for a cake. Uh, so really, it's just something that's useful, and it is something that we'll go through quickly here, hopefully. So what I have here is a net. Nets are the unfolded things. And this is a, a net of a rectangular prism three inches all the way down here, one inch all the way across. And the surface area is just all these pieces added up together, the area. And I like to make sure that I go ahead and break these down in a very clear way. So I like to go ahead and number these things. So one, two, three, four, five, six, because I'm worried that otherwise I will mess it up and forget one. So the surface area of a prism, as I said, some of some of the faces, so we just have to add all these up. If this is one, this is a square, so this is just going to be one and one. So let's just put that down. One. We'll come to the units later. One and one. One and one. This one's going to be three. So it's going to be one, three and one, three and one, and three and one again. Now I'm going to I'm going to label these based on what they are. So this is the one for up here. This is two. This is three, this is four, this one's five, and this one's six. And I can figure out the area of these very quickly. One times one is one, so that's one inch squared for this one here. Another one, one inch squared, because it's the same shape. Then I have these here, so I have one times three, so that's going to be three inches squared. And we're going to do that a total of four times. And I know this is a little bit of extra writing, but I find that I, this way I make sure that I don't skip any steps. So 1 plus 1, 2, 5, pl 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 3 is 8, plus 3 is 11, plus 3 is 14. So it's going to be 14 inches squared. That's the surface area. Now over here, for a cylinder, what you have to think about is uh, if you have a, a paper, roll of paper towels or toilet paper or something like that, when you unroll it, you come up with a rectangle. The reason why is, yes, there's the circular part that's at the end, but the rectangular part is the part that's what's called the lateral surface. And the logic behind this is, if, if you look at this, if I have here a, uh, a shape here, and this is, let's say that this is three, centimeters, and so that's assumed to be three centimeters to the radius there, and let's say three centimeters here as well. Three centimeters for this, for this part here as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and basically write this out. We're going to figure out the area of these different things. And the area of these different things is pretty easy to figure out if you if you just go ahead and break it down into the steps that you can. So this one here, the area of the circle is just going to be pi r squared, so 3 squared. And that's going to be 9 pi. I'm just going to write in terms of pi here. And I've got two of those, so I've got 9 pi plus 9 pi. Okay, so far, so that's just the area of the circle. Now, the lateral surface is a little bit harder to visualize. Remember, the lateral surface, this, if I started rolling this piece across, it would get this far and then a little bit further before I get to the end here. If I, if I made a mark here, and I started rolling it, I'd end up rolling it this way, and then if I kept on rolling it here, I'd end up right back there. So it's the circumference is one full rotation is actually the length of the lateral surface here, of the base of it. So, so that's one way of thinking that. And then you just have the height, which in this case is going to be, as we already said, it's going to be three centimeters. So, so we've got now this formula. It's just going to be a rectangle, so it's just going to be base times height. And this, terms the base is the circumference. So this portion here 
it's just the circumference, so it's just going to be 2 times pi times r, which is, in this case here, it's going to be 3 times h, which the height, which is 3. And I multiply this all together, I get 2 times pi times, I'm just going to do 2 times 3, which is 6, times 3 more, which is going to now be 18. So it's 18 pi. So I've got 18 pi, and I've got these two other things, which are the circles, and those add up together to be 18 pi as well. And so together I have 36 pi. So I just want to multiply by 3.14 if I want. And that's going to be in centimeters squared. Because remember, we're dealing with surface area. So this portion of the formula is just this piece up here. This portion of the formula is just this piece down here. Now this problem here is interesting because we have to use our Pythagorean theorem knowledge as well. So if you look here, we've got a triangle, a triangle, Rectangle, rectangle, rec and then rectangle, rectangle, and rectangle on the bottom. And we know what some of the th measures are, but we don't know what all of them are. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which ones we know and which ones we don't know. This one here, we have, we don't have this one, this measure right here. And I like to draw these out as a way of showing how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this out. So if I have a triangle here. And then I have a rectangle box that links up the two triangles. So that's going to be uh, this, uh, this piece right here, this big piece right here. And then I have another triangle. It's the same size as the other. And then I have a, I have a little bit smaller box on the back end here. That's what this piece is. And then over here, I have the longest box. These can be a, a little bit hard to visualize. So really, just work with me here and see if you can do it. Now, this is uh, we have the measures for the following. I'm just going to start with the triangles. We have the measures for the following. We have the measures for this, 3. We have the measures for this, 3. So that's the first part. And this is going to be 3 here, too, and 3 here, too. Uh, we have the measure for, um, for the height, which is going to be 2. So this is going to be 2, 2, 2, and 2. Now we need the measure of here. And so we also have this measure here, which is going to be 4 and 4. So we can figure out this box. This is 3, 3. Figure out this box and this box, but we can't figure out any of the other ones because we don't have the measure of the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So let's do that quickly. Remember, right triangle hypotenuse. All we're going to do is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember that wonderful little magical Pythagorean theorem. So it's 3 squared. Plus b uh, plus four squared equals c squared. When I do that, I'm going to end up with nine plus sixteen is equal to c squared. So that's twenty-five. Take the square root of that. So c is going to be equal to five. Well, twenty-five is c squared. As I'll do the full problem. So c is going to be equal to 5. So now I got this measure here, 5. It's going to be 5. It's going to be 5. It's going to be 5. And I'm going to change my color here just to make sure it's clear. And what I want to make sure to do is I want to make sure I have all the all the sides covered. So I got this is 1, this is 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and five. These are the five boxes I have. I'm going to draw them down here. So this is going to be box five. It's going to be three times two, which is going to be box five, three times two. So that's going to be six and six inches squared. 
Okay, so now I got that one taken care of. Now I'm going to figure out this box here. This is going to be four times two. So a little bit longer. Four times two, and we have eight inches squared for that one here. So I can kind of check that one off, check this one off, check that one off. Now I've got to figure out these two. Now I could have figured out the actual area of these two, and I was just stuck on this one here before because I had the I had the height, which is three, and the base, which is four. But I still would need to figure out that one for the other one. So so the height is three, the base is four. So I'm just going to do three times four, which is twelve, then half it. So that's for that one. It's going to be six inches squared. And then I've got the other one, which is the same. So 3 and 4. So that's going to be 6 inches squared again. Now the last box here is the longest one. That's going to be 5 and 2. So that's going to be 10 inches squared. So I add them all up. 6 plus 6 plus 6, that's 18, plus 8 is going to be 26, plus 10 more is going to be 46 inches squared. For this, form, for this one here, I'm just going to use the, uh, the formula that I already talked about with you. It's going to be 2 times pi times r squared. Those, that's the circle on the top. In this case here, since we have no circle on the bottom, we have a circle on the top. And then if you see that delicious frosting in the middle, that would be the other circle we have to take care of to make sure we have enough frosting. So now I have that. And then plus 2 times pi times r. In my family, we believe that the frosting is simply uh, is the most important part of the cake, and it's the cake is simply there to hold up the frosting. So here, we just plug that in, surface area, and I'm going to leave this in terms of pi, and you can multiply it out if you want uh, by yourself afterwards. So just plug in the information. Pi r squared is going to be, remember this is 4, and if you want to take this as two separate problems, that's fine, provided you remember to combine them afterwards. Times 4 times 3. So this is going to be 2 times pi times 16 plus 2 times pi. I might as well get started on this multiplication times 12. So now I got 2 times 16, that's 32 pi plus 2 times 12, which is going to be uh, which is going to be 24 pi. And all together, that's going to give us a total of 56 pi inches squared. So if I multiply this 56 times 3, 4, 1, 4, I have my answer. And we are done.